Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technology Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue on a discussion on the characteristics of component. I'd like to highlight how component actually behave in high frequency. For this video, I'm going to have a series discussion on a passive component like resistor, inductor, capacitor, and diode. And in more precise, this video, I'm going to concentrate on resistor. We are going to take a look how the resistor behave or what is the equivalent circuit of a resistor in a high frequency. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Let's start by discuss on the passive component. Under passive component, we have resistor. Okay, so this is how the resistor look like. I believe most of you probably have already associated or used the resistor. We also have the inductor. Basically, over here, you can see that there are mainly, in fact, more than these two types of inductor. So basically, this type look almost the same as resistor. And over here, basically, you can see that basically they coil Okay, round and round. Okay, so this is also a form of inductor. And last but not least, capacitor. Again, there are a few series of capacitor which I will further describe on the next few video. So under the passive component, we mainly has these three types, resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Passive component like resistor, inductor, and capacitor, they have many applications in electronic circuit. Much of the mystery actually surround them is the high frequency. So in reality, in DC, basically they work quite predictable. But under high frequency, you realize that from this video, okay, the resistor may also have different undesired effect. So we are going to see how can we avoid this undesired effect, especially when we use this passive component in a high frequency. Okay, it is often the fault of the selection of component that actually cause this issue. So if we didn't choose the appropriate component at the high frequency, this actually arise an issue. When the paperwork design is nearly finished, it is time to start the selection of components. At high frequencies, this may require much careful attention. Okay, so this is something that I want to address at this few series discussion on the passive component. The passive component behave totally different at high frequency. And when we actually, most of the time, when we, when we start off the design, we come out the schematic. So once we're done with the schematic, we need to choose the different types of component to work as a whole in a circuit. And because of the selection of the component, especially at high frequency, we need to be especially careful. Okay, in fact, the final component characteristic may require some circuit design. Okay, for example, when we actually select all the component, okay, they may actually require some component design. So I suggest that it's good if you can run the simulation again to check the effect. Okay, even after the appropriate component is selected, okay, there may be some error. Okay, for example, the length of the resistor, the length of the inductor, they have some lag. Okay, the orientation and the spacing, okay, they can still alter the characteristics of a passive components. Okay, in short, okay, if you are not careful at high frequency, okay, the following could happen. Okay, the capacitor become an inductive. The inductor become a capacitive effect. The amplifier also oscillate and the oscillator basically they does not oscillate. Okay, so this can be some of the undesired effect. So over here, we are going to study how can we avoid this kind of situation. Let's start off by discuss on resistance. Okay, resistors are formed by connecting lead across a resistive element. Okay, the resistor is measured in ohms and basically is governed by this equation here. Okay, so this is the resistor value in ohms. Basically, this is the resistivity of the element in ohms centimeter. Okay, we have the length. This L stands for the length, and this is the area okay take a look on this diagram here for example let's say this is a resistor okay so you can see from here this is the l 
Okay, and this is the cross section area. And what we need to know is basically how much is the resistivity in ohms per cm on this element when the current actually pass through here. Okay, what is the resistivity in terms of ohms centimeter? Okay, by using materials of particular resistivity and special geometry, okay, resistor can be manufactured having the desired operation. Okay, so therefore, if we can design the resistor based on the L and also based on the cross section area, we can design a specific resistor value as mentioned by this equation here. Okay, resistor form into one of the two general category. Okay, we have a fixed value resistor and we can also have some variable resistor. Okay, so you must uh, must not so-called understand in this sense that we can vary very high difference minimum to maximum resistor. Okay, there will be still a range of resistor. Okay, therefore this is what we call a variable. Okay, but please be careful that you don't think that we can set from something like one all the way to one mega ohm resistor. Okay, so therefore there is still some constraint when we talk about variable resistor. Okay, the resistor has a symbol that look like this, which I believe you guys are very familiar about this. For an ideal resistor, basically this is a equivalent circuit of an ideal resistor, purely just the R factor here. However, this is the resistance equivalent circuit. Okay, so this is how it look like. Okay, you basically will be able to see the two legs here. Okay, because this is a picture of a resistor, you probably see the two legs. Okay, so because of this two leg is a, like a wire. Basically, a wire is like an inductor. So you basically can see over here there are two inductor that appear into the equivalent circuit. There is also the parastatic capacitor in the resistor equivalent circuit. Okay, so this is the resistor equivalent circuit. Let's take a look on two extremes at low frequency and high frequency. How does the resistor equivalent circuit look like on the next page? Okay, so this is a impedance response. Okay, so basically it's a frequency versus the impedance. Okay, so how does the resistor actually behave? At very low frequency, okay, you can see from here. Okay, let's take a look on this equivalent circuit. A very low frequency, okay, which means that this is very small. So I I will actually get this XL very small for these two here. So because these are all very small, so therefore current will prefer to flow this path here. But on the other side, on the capacitor, okay, when frequency is low, when this is low, I actually have a very big XC, okay, which means that the current will not keen to flow this path. And because of this, when at low frequency, most of the current will flow this path. And therefore, at low frequency, the resistor mainly have inductive effect here. Can you imagine this? Okay, so at very low frequency, majority of the current will flow through this path. And therefore, over here, okay, it behaves like an inductive effect. And if we have a very high resistor as compared to the reactance of the inductor, we can, we can actually eliminate away the inductor and purely as a resistor. However, at high frequency, okay, if you take a close look over here at a self resonant frequency, okay, this totally changed this resistor become a capacitive effect. Okay, so why? Let's take a look here. Okay, when the F keep on increase, okay, so therefore the resistance over here is increasing. So the current will be less reluctant to flow this path anymore. So at high frequency, when this becomes high, okay, you can see that the XC becomes small and therefore the current will actually prefer to flow this path. And because of this at high frequency, the resistor becomes uh, dominated by a capacitive effect here. So therefore at high frequency, okay, for large R, okay, we can totally omit away this XL. However, we cannot omit away the capacitive effect. Okay, so basically this is a quick discussion about the passive component of a resistor. You can take a look on this impedance response at low frequency. The, the resistor is mainly uh, inductive. As for high frequency, it's mainly dominated by a capacitive. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. See you guys.